Hey everyone and welcome to this tutorial series on Arduino for complete beginners. In this series, you are going to learn how to get started with Arduino step by step in a practical way. If you don't know anything about Arduino, this tutorial series is for you. And on the other hand, if you are already familiar with Arduino but you feel that you could need a quick refresher of the basics, well, the following tutorials are also going to help. And just before we get started, this tutorial series is actually a free extract of a much longer Arduino course. If you're interested, check out the link in the description. And now let's get started with the series. In this first video, you are going to understand what Arduino is exactly. What is Arduino? What can you do with it? And also, what kind of Arduino board are we going to use? Very simply put, Arduino combines hardware with software in a perfect way for beginners to start creating hardware projects and control them with simple programming. And before we even go further, what can you do with an Arduino board? Well, actually, a lot of things. Two of the most common project fields are home automation and robotics. For example, with Arduino, you can create an alarm system in your home, control the movement of a robot, detect obstacles, make some music, create a weather station, work with IoT or Internet of Things, etc, etc. An Arduino board is a small electronic board which contains what is called a microcontroller. The microcontroller will be responsible for executing the programs that you have written. Note that a microcontroller is quite different from what runs typical computers, which are microprocessors. To give you an idea, the microcontroller on the Arduino board is running at 16 MHz and has 2 KB of memory. On a standard computer, you can get for example a multi-core 2 GHz CPU and 8 GB of RAM. When you look at the numbers, well, the difference is huge. So with a microcontroller and Arduino, you can see that you won't be able to do things that require a lot of computation power for example, processing images. But on the other hand, a microcontroller is much cheaper than a typical laptop and is also much closer to hardware. You will see that with Arduino, you can easily control many hardware components and the computation power is in fact good enough to run many projects, so don't worry about that. You just have to know that computers and electronic boards, such as the Arduino, are different things made for different applications. Now, where can you find microcontrollers in everyday life? Well, they are everywhere. Every day you see or interact with many electronic devices that are run by microcontrollers. For example, you can find microcontrollers in your phone, a microwave, a washing machine, a car, a plane, etc, etc. Basically, any electronic machine contains one or many microcontrollers. Now, the thing is that working with electronics, software and microcontrollers in general is quite difficult and there is a big learning curve before you can do anything. And here comes Arduino. Thanks to Arduino and the Arduino boards, it is now much easier to start working with electronics and microcontrollers. Arduino is the easiest way to get a first step in the microcontroller and the electronics world. With an Arduino board, as you will see in this course, you can create fun and interesting hardware projects in no time. And after learning Arduino, if you want, you can dive deeper into the microcontroller world and reach a more advanced level, which can lead you to more projects and, for example, a great job. So with Arduino, no complicated setup at all. Just install a software that is called the Arduino IDE or Arduino Integrated Development Environment, and that's it. Then you can directly create circuits and upload programs to your board. I will explain all that step by step in this course. Now, when was Arduino created? Well, first, when we speak about the name Arduino, we speak about the Arduino project, initiated in 2003 with the goal of providing a low-cost and easy way for any people to start hardware projects with microcontrollers. The first created board was named Arduino Uno and is still currently the most popular to get started with Arduino. After the Uno, many other Arduino boards were created 
and today you can still regularly see new boards that are released. So among the most commonly used boards, you can for example find the Arduino Nano, which is basically the same as Uno, but running on a much smaller board. You also have the Arduino Mega, which contains more hardware connectors and is a little bit more powerful. Arduino Uno, Nano and Mega are the three most common boards you will find in many projects. And then you have so many other boards which contain specific functionalities for specific applications. So with all those boards, why Arduino Uno? Well, this is the most popular one, easier to start and learn with, and also with enough hardware connections to start many projects. If you already have a Nano or a Mega board, note that this is totally fine and this will work the same for you. And after this course, if you have a different project and you find that another Arduino board would be more appropriate, then go ahead and get a new one. The Arduino hardware and software are open source. You can find them on the internet, for example on websites such as GitHub. And behind such a big open source project, you then also have a big open source community. This aspect is what makes Arduino great for your projects. You can easily share any project you have, get feedback from more experienced users, participate in other people's projects, learn and discuss with many other people. And the fact that Arduino Uno is the most popular means that you will encounter even more projects and help using this board on the internet. To finish with the Arduino Uno board, well, what can you actually find on that board? The first and most important thing is the microcontroller here. This will run your code on the board and interact with the different hardware components you add to your circuit. Then you have a USB port so that you can power on and connect the Arduino board to your computer. You also get a DC power jack if you need external power supply. You should also have a push button on the board which is named the reset button to restart your program. We will talk about this more later in the course. Directly on the board, you have other components to make the board run correctly, but you don't need to worry about those for now because that's not really important to get started. And last but not least, the hardware connectors to plug different hardware components. On the Arduino Uno, you get 14 digital pins, 6 analog pins, and some power pins. Alright, that's pretty much it for the board. Note that because Arduino is an open source project, with open source hardware, then you can actually find many different Arduino boards produced by different manufacturers. Depending on the board, the color and layout may be different, but the pin layout and microcontroller don't change, so basically nothing changes for you. Alright, that's the end of this episode. If you found it useful, you will definitely like my full complete course on Arduino named Arduino for Beginners. This course contains about 7 times more content than the series. You can find the link in the description. Thank you for watching, see you in the course or in the next tutorial of the series.